by all means, continue to give it all away to God. Nevertheless, realize that there is no God apart from consciousness. You're not actually giving it away. You're only pretending to give something away. There's not even a something to give away. It's all pretense. But if it works, it's beautiful. But you can even continue doing that while seeing that it's not really true. And you can appreciate the resonance that it creates. I can see that the root beer is not containing happiness. It's not happiness in a bottle. I'm giving it that meaning. I see that. I see the game. I see the pretense. But it's all a play of consciousness. And I see that there is no outside of consciousness. And so that becomes an enjoyable, optional experience. And you can focus yourself like that, holistically positive, in any circumstance. This may take some time. This may take some practice. It may take lifting yourself out of the mud finding some motivation to transcend your shit for a moment. It may take that again and again to get the hang of it, because we're conditioned to believe we're out of control. First, we're conditioned to believe we're in control, which is why we need the conditionment that we're not in control. And then you see that you've always been in control. You've always been the dictator, not the personal you. Okay. But there is a communication happening there. Even you, from a physical point of view, have, to some extent, an influence on what's happening to you and how it's happening to you. When you're low frequency, meaning when you're perpetuating the thoughts, emotions, and physical activities that do not resonate for you, you'll attract more of that non-resonance to yourself in the form of whatever, physical ailments or circumstantial obstacles all the time, or similar patterns repeating themselves, or just feeling shit every day, or being depressed. All of these are not a signal to necessarily allow it, unless you can truly, feel, truly, truly, truly allow it. Like, let the light shine in. If you can be totally happy with your depression, then you've got the hang of what it means to allow things. If not, by all means, change something in your mental, emotional, or physical body. Don't pretend to accept something that generally genuinely does not resonate for you. You can't accept the things that don't resonate for you. They're already accepted. But as a being, your purpose is not necessarily to agree with these things. They're there to show you what is truly desired from a higher perspective, from a more holistic perspective, and what is not desired. You are out to listen to that if this message resonates for you. If you want to be happy and realize all the things that you feel this inner urge to realize, there is a need to start communicating with yourself in this way. To realize that it's up to you how you focus yourself in any moment, regardless of circumstances, regardless even of thoughts, emotions, and physical circumstances or conditions. It's still up to you how you label these things still up to you with what frequency, with what energy you approach these things. Can you see that? Something can happen right now, and it, well, everything continuously happens, but something specific that stands out could happen right now. I can slap myself in the face, and it has a different response in each of you. It's not an inherently da-da-dot experience. You say it's a da-da-dot experience, but that's just a label. Completely optional. The label creates how you feel about it. And how you feel about it reinforces a particular state on all your bodies that doesn't resonate, or does. And when you come into resonance with your being, all things will align for you. Doesn't mean there's no challenges. Doesn't mean you're never going to suffer again. Doesn't mean you're never going to disagree again. Simply means things start smoothing themselves out. You start flowing. You start gaining the insights that you've always longed for, but kept away from yourself out of this need to be a non-person or whatever the need is, whatever your self-deprivational thoughts are and beliefs are. But if you really truly see that it's up to you where you focus your consciousness, where you focus your attention, then you're free. You become more and more independent from the things. If I describe that initial circumstance with the root beard like, ah, oh, fulfilling me, if I would not have the experience of the natural acceptance of all things, of this freedom thing, beyondness, whatever. And if I did not have, maybe more importantly, if I did not have the realization that 
nothing exists outside of consciousness, and it's up to me where, in what spectrum, in what dimension, what level, what frequency, what particular area of consciousness I focus my consciousness into, I would probably be a slave to that root beer. I would be a victim to my circumstances, because that would increase my frequency, because I label it pleasurable, and something else would decrease my frequency, because I label it unpleasurable. Can you have an holistic... Or, bit my tongue back. Can you have an holistic approach toward every situation and see that you're free to call it whatever you want to call it or not call it, whatever resonates but don't not call it anything out of a self-deprivational idea that calling it something is not spiritual you follow because that what you're choosing in that moment is not to be spiritual you're choosing to feel inadequate which is a low frequency vibration you're not actually being spiritual. And your teacher may even pat you on the back saying, you're doing great, you're not labeling anything. But if it doesn't resonate, if it doesn't set you free, it's horseshit. And you should listen to what resonates. It's the only compass you have. Other people's words are no compass. They are no guidance. They're reflections. Which you desire to experience, to explore your inadequacy and to set yourself free from them. So like I said, it's most of the time not the instructions given that are most important. Most important is to realize what it does to you and to become more self-aware of yourself. To set yourself free like that. Does that make sense? No more horseshit. Okay. No more spiritual horseshit. No more non-dual nonsense. Unless you want to continue to deprive yourself and say that I'm the only one in the universe that doesn't deserve the bliss that everything consists of. I'm the only center in this universe that doesn't let that in. That's how unworthy I am. You want to continue to experience that isolation, that non-self-love, that self-deprivation. If that's actually what you want, by all means. But now that I've hopefully made you more aware of that tendency, is it still what you want? You want it to be blind. Now maybe we've removed some of the blindness. Is it still what you want? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to pretend you don't want to be happy because it's not spiritual? Or whatever it is. Or because society doesn't allow it, doesn't condone it. You can't be happy without a reason. There has to be a circumstance in your life that everybody collectively agrees is positive before you can call it positive. If you call it positive, before everybody else calls it positive, you're going to stand out in a negative way, and we're so afraid of that. Right? We're pioneers. It's your duty to be uncomfortable in society. You came here to rattle the cages. And yes, in that, there is a lot of learning for yourself. There's a lot of joyful, if you choose to see it that way, participation in relationship to your own beliefs. Sometimes it may feel like hard work. Sometimes it may feel like a breeze. But at all times it's your honor. At all times it's your bliss to be in the mess. It's your bliss, it's your chosen bliss. You freely chose it to be in the mess. You saw the mud, you knew exactly what was ahead of you, and you chose to dive in. <laughs> You're my heroes. You're my inspiration. So explore this throughout this life and throughout the next few weeks and days especially. Explore that moment where you call something by a certain name and see where that label comes from. And see if you can find that label in the inherent circumstance. Can you find it in the cells vibrating in that person that's being beat, that's being beaten? Can you find inherent wrongness in the atoms dancing? Can you find inherent wrongness in the air that's effortlessly surrounding that person that's being beat up? Or is it your label to call it, this is bad, this is really, really wrong, this is negative, this is so terrible. You, 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 you shouldn't do that. 